Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah um, today spoke with me about uh, judgment that is coming. I know that uh, in the first, in the past few few days, I've been wondering, I've been asking the Lord, why? Why is Kenya becoming very abusive to your latter and most revered glory? I know that I've been asking very serious questions, and I've been sharing with some pastors and senior bishops here that the visitation of the Lord for this hour is a very serious visitation and this visitation is a portion to Christ the Messiah. It belongs to Christ the Messiah. And that this visitation has a very, very serious purpose and objective to prepare the nations for the glorious coming of Christ the King, Christ the Messiah. And so, for the past few days, I've been asking serious questions. I've been wondering, why is the largest number of cripples that have walked in the history of this earth is in Kenya? If the largest number of the blind eyes that have opened in the history of the Bible of the earth is in Kenya, the largest number of deaths killed, the largest number of mute spoken, the largest number of HIV AIDS healed and examined by their own doctors and turned negative until today, for many years now. And ARV stopped, and symptoms disappeared, and their QOL, their quality of life, shoot up into the skies, into the heavens. I've been wondering if the highest number of healings, including leprosy, if the glory has come, if heaven has opened here openly and deliberately upon the command of the words of my tongue. Then I've been asking, why? Why then has Kenya still been able to abuse this glory. And for how long will this be? And I remember meeting a few pastors and bishops and telling them that this ancient prophet of the Lord, his words are very heavy, they have weight. His walk with the Lord is known very, very tight, very close. But how can this land still malign him, malice him, and abuse him, and pretend that you do not see him. And so I remember sharing with some of the bishops and pastors that one day the Lord, especially dealing with this ancient prophet of the Lord, one day the Lord might cause a judgment to take place here that Kenya cannot hold, cannot bear, cannot endure, cannot take. He might strike Kenya with a hit that she cannot take. He might do so. And I shared with the bishops and pastors, and I said, one time the Lord might even cause a straight line of assault to take place in the land and sink one side in an earthquake and leave the other side standing in this land. And so today the Lord answered me because the Lord showed me a healing service in this land. And in that healing service, a little crippled baby had walked. Beautiful healing. A baby that was born crippled got up and walked. 
And I remember I put my knees down on the carpet of the altar of the Lord. And I was calling that baby, come baby, walk. The baby was walking towards me on the carpet. And then I told the baby, when the baby arrived, I hugged the baby and told the baby to walk away again. And as the baby walked away, the Lord Jehovah, he made his servant, the mighty prophet, to put his head on the carpet and weep. He made his servant weep because the Lord spoke from heaven and said, Look how you are helping them. And they are crippled and walking. And yet look how the media has blackmailed you. And so his servant wept very bitterly. And then the second part of that dream, I was standing somewhere, and a long fault line developed like this on the land, and one side sank down in a straight, almost a straight line like this. One side sank, and the other side remained in a massive earthquake. I woke up in big shock. And shame. Because I knew that the glory of the Lord, the cloud of the Lord is here. God, the Father himself, is visiting his servant. He has settled here. And I've always feared that any blackmail unto the mighty prophet of the Lord will always attract the wrath of God. And we cannot. Near mortals of this land cannot stand the wrath of God. Everybody in this country was created by the Lord. And so that is what I saw coming in that dream. However, it took about 40 minutes and then the Archbishop calls me and says that the nation media has already corrected the story. They have corrected, they have apologized in the story. They have now published very beautifully the truth now. And so then I wonder now. That is where we are. I've seen this earthquake. The repentance is on the paper now. They have acknowledged that they have published a lie on the mighty ancient prophet of the Lord in a meeting where he commanded heaven to open and heaven obeyed instant and opened and brought down rain from heaven into Nigeria. They are niching of a latter revival, an unstoppable revival of righteousness and holiness in Nigeria. The greatest sign and wonder and stripes of this prophet. That was being blackmailed. But since then, after I woke up from this dream, they have corrected this. So I do not know as that now. But I have seen the earthquake. Straight line, one side collapses, sinks, and the other side remains standing. So I think the churches have to continue repenting, even next weekend. Let the pastors continue leading their people to repentance. I know that yesterday there were over 17,000 pastors of this ministry from all across the country that gathered in Nakuru to repent over this abuse by the media, the Kenyan media, the blackmail, the slander, the malice, the defamation. But let that repentance continue. And I'm also sure now that out of the massive numbers over registered, we registered them yesterday, the over 17,000. Those who fail to come may be around 200 or so. There are not so many. There may be around 200 or so pastors that fail to come because of engagements here and there. However, out of that gathering of yesterday to convene in Nakuru and to repent over the abuse by the Kenyan media, I'm glad now also the world and the nation can see 
the great following of this ministry. Because if you have more than 17,000 pastors, let's say each pastor has a thousand sheep, that is obviously more than 17 million people. So there is a great following in this ministry that cannot be abused. And yet we know that churches like Nakuru Mail are 16,000, uh, 5,000, Kericho, Nairobi 4900, whatever. So, so we know that the numbers are bigger. However, let these big numbers continue repenting even next Sunday in their churches because ever since I woke up from this dream, there has been a repentance. There has been a correction on that article on Nairobi News. There has been an apology there saying that what they published was a lie, was wrong, was malice, was slander, was defamation. And they have now put the story straight. They have now recorded the beautiful visitation, the historic visitation that came out to Nigeria. The ignition of the massive end revival that prepares Nigeria for the coming of the Messiah. With Archbishop, the Right Honorable Reverend Israel, taking national lead in Nigeria. And so let there be repentance even as I give this prophecy. But I have seen the aspect. The aspect I've been asking for. The one I've been telling the Lord to bring to teach this land a lesson never ever to touch his prophet. I've seen now a straight fault line. That's what I say. One time the Lord might do a straight fault line like this and sink one side. I have seen that. But let this repentance probably be the remedy. Because the revival here is too great. I want to believe that this repentance by the article that has come out today might somehow mitigate. I don't want the words of my tongue to be fulfilled here. Like it has been fulfilled in many other places. In Chile, in Haiti, in Nepal. I don't want the words of my tongue to be fulfilled. And I know if you handle this recklessly, you will be fulfilled. And you cannot handle what I've seen. So it's my plea that the many, many, many tens of thousands of pastors that gathered yesterday will continue leading their ship, including the worship pastors. All pastors now, lead your ministries wherever you are. Whether you're doing hospital ministry, the widow's ministry, the youth ministry, lead now your congregations to repentance next weekend. May the Lord be blessed. Because these are the days when the nations are preparing for the coming of the Messiah. At this time, they are preparing. They are preparing for the coming of the Messiah. But I always feared that this blackmail that's happening in Kenya over this ancient prophet of the Lord, this very old prophet of the Lord, a prophet so old like this, you cannot keep blackmailing him as a nation and expect to survive the wrath of God. But now, I have seen the apology. I have not seen it, but the Archbishop has read it to me. And I hope that this will be the remedy, because what I have seen come to this land, you cannot bear. This nation cannot sustain the heat of God. The kind of heat that hit Haiti, the kind of heat that hit Chile, and they all came from my words, from the words of my tongue. Nepal, Russia, Iran, all the Pakistan, the bloodshed in the Arab world continues until today. But the revival here is too great. So I want to believe that the remedy has begun with this article and the repentance of yesterday and that next weekend, even throughout the week, when people gather, they should bring repentance to the Lord. That the Lord may sustain this historic revival in this land. You cannot allow the Lord to take away this revival this late, at this last hour, last minute. No. The nation would sink to hell. And that's why let people repent. Let people repent in their multitudes, in their largest numbers, 
in reverence and fear. Again, it's my prayer that my words do not become fulfilled. I have seen an earthquake that cuts exactly the kind of earthquake I was asking for. At one point, I asked the Lord, why don't you bring that earthquake where you just do a straight fault line and you sink one side that they may know that they cannot touch this ancient old prophet. They cannot touch your ancient old prophet that you have sent with such tremendous power to prepare the nation that has brought only blessings to this land. Only to raise their cripples from the ground, from the soil, Mavumbini, from the dust. You send it only to open the blind eyes of their, their children, their sons, their daughters, their mothers, their fathers, to, to, to open their eyes that they may know that Jesus is coming back. They are deaf, they are mute, but they may be able to hear and see. They are paralytic, spinal cord injuries, broken backs, wounds, leprosy, cancer, HIV, leukemia, all the way down the line, weak necks, weak legs, cerebral palsy. It has only been blessing. The only reason the Lord sent this ancient prophet to you is to bless this land. But how can you bless Moses? As a nation, how? How does one stand up before the Lord and blackmail that? When every other village, in almost every other, in, a, in every village there is a home. In this land, in every village you find a home where a crippled baby uh, uh, at dinner is walk, walking around, was born crippled, but now walking to daddy, when you take that cup to your mom, walking the, with the cup this way, there is a blind child that is now coming to daddy, and say, take this mango and give your sister there and walking. There is joy. There is a dead child that's now hearing. There is joy and the glory of God is throbbing and moving across the villages of this land. How does one stand and blackmail that? And that's why it's my cry that repentance will continue and that the words of my tongue I speak today, that this prophecy that I've been longing for, this judgment I've been longing for, of an earthquake in this land to teach a lesson that it may not be fulfilled. It is my cry it don't be fulfilled. Because this land cannot take a hit. You cannot take a hit from the Lord my sender. You cannot. You cannot sustain it. It will devastate you for ages. Because at one point I was so angry and I said, Lord, you bring an earthquake such that they dig for their loved ones for more than a year and not find them. More than a year digging to find the body. But now is my cry that repentance will continue, that the Lord will not fulfill the words of my tongue. Because in this dream you could see that he was answering me back, that now I have allowed it. But after I woke up, then came the apology of that article. So I hope that is the remedy. I hope that repentance continues, that the Lord may sustain these people. The nation that cried for this revival. Finland is crying every day they're sending healers. They say, please come. Come, we need another conference of pastors. We need another healing service in Helsinki. Last time you were here, a lot of people were healed live on TV so that we may keep this lamp of God burning in Finland also. Sweden is crying. Pastor Victoria Kibuye, Pastor Lars, Pastor, uh, all the pastors of Sweden, they have been crying for a day, just a day. Will the Lord give us a date? And you bring this message to keep the lamp of God burning in Sweden. People are tired of homosexuality. They are tired of many sick people in their midst. They are tired of gospels that are rotten. They want for once to have some hope for the eternal kingdom of God. And they know that he has been sent. New Zealand is crying. South Korea is crying. Australia is crying. Canada is crying. United States every day. Many, many states are writing letters here. TV stations are writing letters here. The whole world. So how does one stand up and blackmail this? How does one who is created, a mere mortal, created by Jehovah, stand up before the Lord and try to blackmail this ancient prophet on whom the cloud of God has settled. How? 
That is what baffles me. And that's why it is my hope that this article that has come out today begins the remedy and the repentance of yesterday, that repentance will continue, and that my words, these words I speak, may not be fulfilled on this land. The Messiah is coming. Shalom.